Good morning. Lovely to see you. It's a lovely morning again. Uh, welcome to my living room and to my thought for the day. Uh, we're in Luke chapter 7 and Jesus has finished all his teaching and he's come back to Capernaum. <coughs> Capernaum was a very, <coughs> very important place for Jesus. It was on the Lake uh, Galilee and it was where uh, the fishermen lived and uh, a lot of his ministry was in the north, much more in the north than in the south, actually, um, when you look at it through the Gospels, because uh, uh, Jerusalem was a dangerous place um, for Jesus. Um, there were lots of people planning to kill him all the time, which is quite surprising when he did so much. He did so many wonderful things. But uh, there are always people in our society, you know, who don't want to change. They don't want change. They want things to stay the same. Even if there's compelling reason to change what we do, people still don't, don't like to change. It's, it's amazing, actually. People don't like change, and yet our entire life is filled with change. As we grow up, we change. As we become adults, we change. As we age, we change. But there are people who don't like change. They, they resent it and they hate it. Anyway, that's not what I was going to think about. But maybe that is a good thing to think about this morning, before we go any further um, in the life of Jesus. Jesus is in the business of change. He's in the business of molding us into his image. He's in the business of changing us, changing the way we think, changing our priorities, changing our view of life, the paradigm that governs how we view life and why we do the things we do. Um, what is the motive? What is the motive in your life? That's a good thought, a good question. What is the motive in your life? Until we meet Jesus, our motive is, I've got only one life to live. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to have a lot of money. So I never stop from doing anything I want to do. I'm going to take a holiday every year. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get a bigger house, a bigger car. I'm going to get a I'm going to get promotion in my job. I'm going to marry the right person. I'm going to have two children. Um they're going to go to university. They're going to do better than I've ever done. And uh, you know, what is the motive for our lives? Is it all about me? Me 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 me. Well, that's what it's like when we're born. We're born completely self-centered. Doesn't matter if we keep our parents up all night and if they need to sleep. We don't care. We we need something. We want we me me, you know, and uh, in in lots of ways, um, it, there's there's been a change in in a lot of the music in the church these days. If you look at a lot of our modern choruses, not all of them by any means, but there are some where you feel as if the songwriter is saying, "Isn't God lucky to have me following Him?" Isn't he blessed that I'm committing everything I've got to him? You know, I'm going to do, I, 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 we shouldn't, I don't like songs that focus on me. I like songs that focus on God and on Jesus and on what they've, they've done for us, what God has done for us. He's done the most amazing things for you and me. And when we come to Jesus, we are challenged to change the absolute basis of our lives, like those two men building their houses. You know, what is the rock bottom basis of your life? What is the core, the core meaning of your life? And when we come to Jesus, it changes from being me, I'm going to do what I like with my life, and I'm going to be satisfied, I'm going to I'm going to provide for my family. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be independent. I'm going to do it myself. I'm not going to do it. Um, I, I mentioned yesterday when we were talking about these houses being built, um, the um, Grand Designs programme. Um, if you've never watched it, it's worth watching it. But we've watched quite a number of episodes of it, and it's amazing how many people build their own house because they're not satisfied with what other, other people do. They want to build their own house. Or if you if you go watch Location Location or one of these ones about moving to the country or, or abroad or whatever. They look at a wonderful, beautiful house 
And the first thing they think is, well, I don't like the way the kitchen is and I don't like where the bathroom is. I'm going to change it all around. I'm going to move this here. I'm going to move that there because it's not the way I want it to be. It's not the way I like it. Um, but when we come to Jesus, the basis of our life, oh, I was thinking about the, oh, I was thinking about the, the grand designs, you know, the number of people who do that and they design their own house and, and they oversee the work. And it gets them into all sorts of problems because they don't know what they're doing. But they have this in them that says, I, I want to have done this myself and nobody else helped me. Now, when you come to Jesus, it's completely different because it's all about teamwork. It's all about being part of a group, part of a, part of a body, part of the kingdom of God, where everybody has different talents and everybody uses their talents for the benefit of the whole and for the benefit of the Lord Jesus. And we don't compete with each other to see whether we can do it better than the next person can do it. No, we give to Jesus and we say, what have I got that you can use in your kingdom, Lord? Here I am and I'll do anything to serve you. We were reading that lovely psalm yesterday. It's one of my favourite psalms. It's Psalm 84. Let me just turn it up. Um, psalm 84. Um, and it has a verse in it that has been the echo of my heart all my life, really. Psalm 84. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. A day in your courts is better than... Than a thousand elsewhere. That's my heart cry. Even if there was no job for me to do, even if there was nothing, and all I could do would be sit in the doorway, it would be a joy just to be in. It is a joy just to be included in the kingdom, to be part of what God is doing in this world. Read Psalm 84, it's a lovely psalm. We might have a little bit more of a look at it tomorrow. Um, uh, it's a, it's a lovely psalm, but it's my heart's cry has always been. Just let me be included, Lord. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for letting, letting me be part of what you're doing in this world. Thank you. Thank you for seeking me until you found me. Perhaps you can say that as well yourself. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me. Thank you, Lord, for chasing after me. Thank you, Lord for looking for me. when I, Even when I didn't even know I was lost, you were looking for me to bring me home and give me security and safety and care and love and restoration. Thank you, Lord. Let's be thankful today and I'll see you tomorrow.